Today we're going to start with this, doing some parsing from Indeed, helping out a viewer. This should work for other parts of the world. And here's what we're going to get at the end of this video. We're going to turn that data after web scraping into this data frame or decide to save it. Let's get into it. Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. So we're going to look at Indeed web scraping once again. The last video I did was October last year and then one the year before and now it's June 2022. It appears that they keep changing the way everything's set up. It can be a little issue for coding this stuff for web scraping. I want to have an honorable mention right here for this viewer and recent member for my channel. So I'm showing my appreciation and doing a shout out. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. I assume today's code will be relevant for other countries feel free to use it if there's any discrepancies reach out to me I do have a community tab for my channel so feel free to leave a message so here's it here's the indeed.com need to pay attention here if you're in a different country because the way that you set it up can cause you issues with parsing this and what I'll show you next in the actual code are actually different because of discrepancies while I was trying to parse we're looking at data analysts today in the region of Chennai in India. So this update this to get the current postings. I'm going to sort by the date because that's how I actually coded it up. I'm using Chrome. So this go into more tools and then this go into developer tools. Not sure where you're at for web scraping if you've done it before or if you have not. I have two prior videos for Indeed if you're curious. They all have different code for data I'm extracting which may or may not be relevant for you. So I'd suggest checking those out to get ideas of different Different things to parse click this real quick and look at our first entry and we'll notice that we have this break right here so the scroll up and figure out where the outermost portion is that contains each one of our job postings so it's held within this div class mosaic zone with an idea of mosaic zone job cards that's holding each one of our entries and if you go right here you're going to notice something this ul class you're holding list each one of our entries is a list after five entries you're going to have you're gonna have uh, I think it's 15 entries per page so this is the first portion that we need to start considering to start pulling our data this list holds everything containing our job description company the city possible salary description of the job a hyperlink which you see right here this hyperlink if we use this takes us to the full job description which you could further parse or do some text analysis or whatever you want to do post this on your website for example such as the reason I was contacted to do this video let's start figuring out how we can start pulling these data since these are all held within a list should I consider parsing this list by list should I parse everything from the outer list make a call and pull everything my holds with inside of it for last year's video I was using the job scene beacon to extract these data today I'm doing it a little differently some of the tags such as the h2 class that you see here here this holds your job title but you can also pull the job title in the span title right here depending on how you want to parse we have to be considerate of something each one of these jobs held within the list also contains a table so this T body is a table holding all of our information within it so you have to be careful how you start pulling these data because you're always working from outer to inner remember outer to inner for parsing and for scraping now let's go into our code real quick do some looking around if you want to follow Follow along feel free to import these libraries here that you see otherwise the codes gonna be on my github which would be in the link in the description below the client had specifications relevant to their system which are held within this header that they used so if you have a specific system requirement or something that you're working with you can use this that's what's held within here he decided that he was interested in the skill which is basically the job the location and then going through a specified number of pages iterating within this number of pages so we can go through many pages if you noticed here this indeed is different than 
this link here. This link here, when I tried to parse, I was having issues. He provided this one, which made it much easier for me to deal with. The skill, the location, I decided to sort by date for relevancy, and then start pages. Every page after the first will have this 10. The first page does not have this. So let's look at that so you can pay attention. We have a data analyst we're looking for in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. I'm sorting by the date, and then you have this right here. Let's go into the second page and let me explain what I was talking about. Here's the second page and it'll have that start that we're looking at. Scroll down, we'll go on the third page and it'll have 20 and so on. The next thing we're doing is we're taking our URL and we're going to use the request uh, library and we're going to grab that URL with these specific headers and we're going to return this response with text. Here I'm using LXML because it's coded in C which would be faster versus the HTML which would have been utilizing uh, Python specific code instead. Let's start from our beginning from our outer body where we're going to basically use soup which is this variable to grab our website and we want to find the div with the attributes of the ID provider job cards that I showed before which is the outermost portion of where we're going to pull these data okay so we scroll back up and that's right here so this is the outermost for each one of our entries from there we need to work inside with our ul lists so i decided to iterate through this let's see what happens real quick okay let's do two things first let's see what happens when i decide to print the outermost point and see what happens oh i gotta close that so we're looking for a data analyst we're going to take the city of Chennai, and then let's just do two pages so here we go so here's everything raw we started from the outermost we have all of our jobs held within if we scroll down a little bit we'll say okay here's our job beacon that's basically where we're starting for each entry and we could say all right so I see that I got a title hidden in here here's a, a data analyst and we have our href which is our tag that we'll need to grab later let's get into all the other information I'm iterating through the UL tags let's see what this even looks like from the get-go let's go through this again and here's all of our our list holding our data we should be able to see that here's our job title that we're going to parse out next from this h2 class and it is for a full details data analyst for some company let's see there's the title data analyst it's for Honeywell. Let's scroll down and look around. And this right here is the basic job description. This is the information that you're going to see in this little text box right here. It's like the abbreviated version of what the job description actually is. Now let's do something else. I chose not to go this route and I'm going to show you what's going on. So here. This is relevant for each one of the job postings. This is just the basic job description for each one of the jobs. And you say, well, okay, this is interesting. It's giving us something for each one of the jobs, but it's only giving us a brief description. What happened to the rest of the data? But it seems like I'm kind of not going in the correct direction, and I'm actually in a position where I might be complicating this for myself. So instead, let's just go directly into this and find our data. So we're going to find our job title, like I showed before which would be held within this list we scroll down we see okay this is basically where we're starting from go down a little bit and here is where I'm finding our job title which is highlighted on the left in blue say so, all right let's print this out and see what's going on this looks fine so it looks like each one is delineated here so let's see where the fifth one is because the sixth one should have a blank yeah there you are none right there so that's the division part that I was talking about before where you'd have basically an empty list that's perfect we can use this right here to basically pull our job title or the name of our job basically we have a pricing analyst we got a senior analyst we got a business analyst what else data visualization engineer business analyst analyst for learning specialist something like this so we're getting closer and if you notice here we have this span tag which also has a position right in here I didn't go that route uh, for a specific reason but we don't have to go into that now I created basically like 
an exception or like a condition where if the job title is none because you have those empty lists after every five entries it's going to be just a none or empty we just basically can ignore this and we could take that data and move in to finding our text which is in an a tag now Let's print this off and see what we're actually getting. We could store that because we could look at it again. Uh, we could look at both actually and see what it looks like. Just pair one on top of e each other. It's just in one page. So we have a data analyst which came from this information here which was stored right there because we pulled it out of an A tag. This is basically just a raw portion here that has our job title that we're printing out. And then I chose to pull the data analyst straight out of there. The next position is this business analyst for this because they obviously did some weird formatting for whoever wrote it. We got a risk analyst in compliance. We got a senior analyst. We got a data analyst. So we got that taken care of, which is great. The next thing that we can adjust is the company name. The company name is going to be held within the span class company name and it has the same type of situation after every five entries and then we have to go further inside. So let's try to find this. So the scroll down and it should be held within here somewhere. So span title. Let's find this company name that we're looking for. We can start scrolling in here and start digging around. Click on that and now we have our company name that we can extract right here and inside of it you see another a tag. We have another one of these hrefs but this is a little different so we said okay cool let's pull this company name it's bny melanie within this a tag so we were able to go inside this span class get the company name convert it to text and just grab our companies now we have those links that i was talking about those href links so let's print this off real quick because this is going to be kind of interesting i want to kind of show what this looks like before you actually print this portion right so let's print both one on top of each other so you can get an idea of what is really going on. And let's just do one page for simplicity's sake. Within that whole tag, we're trying to find the href, which is our hyperlink, which is this thing right here. Well, it's actually this, this entire thing right here. You see, like, I think this is from mobile data, I think, like these links, that's what I'm thinking, but I'm not entirely sure because I didn't pull those. So now we go inside that a tag and then we find the job class title and we pull the href. So here's the job class title that we're going inside and this is what we're snagging outside of it or inside of it. Next thing, not every job has a salary. You barely find with these jobs, at least for the pages I was looking at, snippets that had the job, the position salary. So we have to account for that. When I was looking through this specific class, which had attribute snippet for our salaries, we can see that when we look out of this, you don't really see anything. You see like one salary here and then the rest don't have anything. So we have to kind of figure out, all right, where am I going to find this salary if I'm interested in this in the first place, but I chose to do it on purpose. So you could have one more little piece of information that would help you out. So this one has a salary and then scroll down and start looking. We're gonna go a little bit more, there we are. So inside this heading, we're gonna start digging down deeper and here's that div class attribute snippet that I pulled in the code. And inside of it, we see, oh, there we are. This is what we need to try to pull. We need to snag this little bit of information. So how are we going to do this, right? Because it's right here. We wanna pull that text with inside of this. So you had to go and just call the text and it'll snag it. And then you basically have to do an else statement and say, okay, if we don't see that, just say no salary and then store those in the salary. So make sure you see these are both the same. So it's keeps storing sequentially. I decided to pull the dates because I wanted to give people the opportunity to practice this with date and time formatting as well. The date for the postings is in the span and we're looking for the attributes with the class and the date. So let's just pull this one. Let's start scrolling down in this and figure out where we can see the lowermost portion. So we're gonna start about right here. Start digging through, say, okay, where is it at? in here we start playing and there you go there's the date right there span class date so we can just pull the text out of this directly and that's what we're going to use let's put everything together and append it into a list i want to create a default dictionary which allows me to take each key and store the values as a list so let's pull everything together and let's pull two pages this time 
and now we're starting to pull all of our data. Okay, so what did I leave printed? I left these two printed. That's fine. Let's look at this real quick and see what it looks like. So we see that we have Honeywell needs a data analyst with this link, no salary and posted. Well, it's just posted. Then we see, all right, Propel Technology, this is what they need. That's perfect. We have each entry stored as a list. Let's move on from that and get our data situated. I did this real quick. I just cut and pasted, but for simplicity's sake, but I took the first first entry from our list and I zipped it together with the list of what I want to be for each key to give you an example of how we're going to create our dictionary with a default dictionary uh, list. So what I did was iterate through the list from Indeed that we're creating and making a list zipping it together which is basically like what you were seeing in this prior step up here and iterating through that and creating our default dictionary list where this is our first entry here which is our key and the second entry which is our value and that's how we're storing our default dictionary list which says all right I have my company and here's all of our values this is good formatting that we can use later or uh, for storing or we can create a data frame if we want to work with it now and I want to show you something so let's actually wait on this so here's the data frame that we're taking and instead of using the default dictionary I just took directly the indeed posts that were stored and the columns, uh, column names, which was the list that was created prior. And you're going to see like the same type of jobs from different companies because some of them are recruiters or things like this. You're going to see overlaps because maybe they posted the same job multiple times or something like this. Now we have this posted today, but this create a actual date time formatting to take care of this. So what are you going to need? These should have been imported at the top, but this is just for illustrative and reinforcement forcing what you're actually doing and what you need. I'm taking the data frame that we just created and I printed off right here. We now need to iterate through the column of the job posted date, which is right here. I am using regular expressions to find all digits in each string for each row of data. And I'm doing a string join where I'm finding all of these. And I want to convert this where I'm taking today's date and subtracting it from the time delta from the date that we find and convert it into this string formatting of time. Now, after I append it, I have to also do an else statement because you have two situations where you have posted today just posted so this is taking care of anything else where we don't see like posted one day ago two days ago etc like this and putting it all together so here's everything that was posted as of today June 8th this is American formatting and be switched if you're in another country you know for the two pages that we got these are the job postings today and yesterday is what was posted so that's the little bit of video that I wanted to show today pretty simple just to give you a heads up on different things to think about when you're parsing indeed and if you want to compare and contrast look at the other two videos that I did prior other items that I parsed and you can see the discrepancies of what was changed in indeed over the last two years I'm sure that there's other ways you can parse these data this is just one example but thank you for watching please like share and subscribe and feel free to leave a comment or connect with me on the community page thanks again for the new member to my channel that I said at the beginning of the video. See you in the next one. Bye.